Identity Server's open design allows for any data store to store users and their data, such as profile data, password hashes, roles and claims. Therefore it doesn't have a built-in user data store and also doesn't have functionality to let users change their password, turn on and apply multi-factor authentication and change their claims for example. You're free to use whatever you would like to use for that, or write your own functionality, but realize that ASP.NET Core already includes all of this out of the box in the form of ASP.NET Core Identity. And Identity Server includes support to integrate it. In this quick start you'll see how that works. I'm Ronald Guit for Duende Software, the company behind Identity Server. ASP.NET Core Identity is a framework around cookie authentication. It features a user store out of the box using an entity framework DB context and functionality like multi-factor authentication, password resets and account lockouts. In addition to that it has a ready-to-go UI for everything users need, like a login screen and a screen to manage their profiles. It was designed to be implemented in an individual web application that doesn't use an identity provider, but in an organization having a separate user store for each and every application is not desirable most of the time, and also in this scenario there's no possibility for single sign-on. So we have to centralize, and that is one of the main things that identity providers offer. With an identity provider, after the authentication flow completes, there is still a cookie that is set by the identity provider. Users will have a session with the identity provider in the same way as they would have when using an application with separate authentication. And they will have the need for all functionality ASP.NET Core Identity offers. That's why Identity Server has the option to integrate with it. From now on I will refer to ASP.NET Core Identity as simply Identity. Here are the links to this quick start in written form and the code. Now before we get started I'm assuming knowledge on Identity Server fundamentals. If not, watch a previous quick start first. Also I'm not covering how Identity works, just how to integrate it with Identity Server. I'm also expecting you know Entity Framework basics. During the previous quick starts we created this solution with the Identity Provider, API, Console Client and Web Client projects. We're starting out with a fresh Identity Provider project, so I'm deleting the existing Identity Server project. The Identity Server templates covered in the previous quick starts are ideal to start out with Identity Server in combination with Identity with the template ISASPID. When creation is done you have the option to see the database. This will create Identity's database and add two initial users and their claims to it. Their usernames are Bob and Alice. Next we're adding the new project to the solution. We are examining the way Identity is used in the template. First of all the project file contains a reference to Duenda Identity Server ASP.NET Identity which contains everything that is needed for the integration. It has a dependency on the core Identity Server package, so no need to add that as well. Identity uses Entity Framework and we see that the SQLite database provider is used. The NuGet packages needed for Identity are present too. Switching to hostingextensions.cs, which configures the dependency injection container and the pipeline. The methods in here are called from programcs at application startup. The built-in identity entity framework DB context is added to DI. Configure it to use SQLite. Next, add identity configures identity as normal, specifying a user and a role class and telling it to use application DB context and the default token providers. The rest of the method is what you would expect. As you can see the template uses an in-memory configuration present in the config static class. What does stand out is the call to add ASP.NET identity when configuring identity server. 
This is needed because Identity Server must add claims for Identity's users to the tokens. There is no identity-specific code in the rest of the file. Taking a look at Program CS, we see the calls to the method in hosting extensions.cs, and we're looking for a command line argument slash sheet. We ran the project with this argument when we answered yes to the question we got when the template was installed. It calls ensure C data on a class that gets the application DB context from the I and calls migrate on it, which will run the migrations which are included in the template. And these migrations are responsible for creating the user database identity users. In this line, the user manager is retrieved, which is a class that comes with identity. Among many other things, it can be used to see if the user Alice is present. If it is not, it is created with a new instance of the application user class, which is then added to the database with the user manager providing the password. Also additional claims are added. And further down there's the same code for Bob. The code for the pages in the pages account folder where Identity's UI resides is slightly different too. The pages will now use the types provided by Identity where needed. In the login page, for example, the user manager and sign-in manager are now injected, which are both identity classes. And when a user successfully logs in, password sign-in async is called on the sign-in manager object. When that succeeds, the user object is retrieved with the user manager. Before we run, there are a few changes necessary in config.cs. Change the client ID of the last client to web, and make sure the configured URIs are all pointing to port 5002, where the client will be running. Also change the last scope of allowed scopes to API 1. And scrolling up, define just one API scope, API 1. Finally, set the client secret to secret. When you now run the identity server, web client and API projects together, you should be able to log in with Alice or Bob with this password. Now that we have that working, let's see how to add additional claims for a user. Application user is a class that is in our project. It derives from identity user, which is included in the identity framework. It contains all the standard claims like username and email. The reason this file is here is that properties can be added that are relevant for our organization. I'm using favorite color here as an example. Now in the code that seeds the data, the value for the new property can be added, for Alice in this case. But just adding a property will not change the database automatically. We'll need to add and run a migration. We can create a migration at the terminal like this. We could apply it to the database now and the new column would be there but Alice still wouldn't have a favorite color. An easy way to solve this for the demo project is to first delete the database before running all migrations again and reseeding. We can do that by adding a line of code in cdata.cs. To see the data again, type .NET run slash seed. This trick is not advisable in production, of course. There you should create some mechanism to give all users a favorite default color of unknown and ask users to supply the new information when they log in, for example. Okay, we have the claim in the database. Now we have to make sure identity server knows about the new claim. It uses a type called profile service for that and there's a default one in the integration package that receives all standard claims from identity. We are creating a new file with our own version of that, deriving from the standard one. The user manager instance and an iUser claims principle factory object is needed to pass to the base class. And there's an override for get profile data async that first gets a principle with all standard claims passing in the application user. It then gets the user identity object from that 
and adds the new claim if the user has a favorite color. All claims, including the new one, are then passed to the context, which is a profile data request context object. To instruct Identity Server to use the alternative profile servers, add this to hostingextensions.cs. So now Identity Server knows about the new claim. But we still need a way to request it from a client. For that, in config.cs, we can add a new identity resource that represents an identity scope. We name it color, which just contains one claim, the new one. To allow the new web client to request the new scope, it has to be added to the allowed scopes collection. And finally, to actually request a new scope from the client, we have to modify its program CS. To make the new claim available in the application, it is also required to map the claim manually. And when we run now, the claim is visible in the application. And that's it for this video. Hope it helps. See you in the next one.